The Minnesota Vikings have been around since 1961. And I just want them to win a damn Super Bowl before I die. Welcome to Before I Die with Judd and Jesse on Purple Daily and Score North. Just one, you guys. Just one before we die. You know, Minnesota Vikings, if you could help us out, whether that's this year, next year, before things get to be too crazy here in Minnesota. I'm Jesse Pierce, NHL.com, Bard on Beauties, and Judd's Hockey Show. He's Score North, Purple Dailies, at Minnesota's very own sports dad, Judd Zolget. That guy over there, that's Ross. He's our producer. I know you guys haven't seen him in a couple weeks. Uh, Ross, I'm glad that you've rejoined us, that you are off the pup list. I believe that's probably what was the case. Um, how are we doing? How are we feeling? You know, we're, we're past the ear infection. We're past the stiff back. We're good to go. We have reported and ready for duty back to the chagrin of many in the YouTube comments there. Yeah. You know, I, we're happy to have you back. That's all that really matters. Forget the yahoos in the comments. Mighty kind of you. It's good to see you both. We were getting concerned about you. Like Declan was there the first week, and then it was the second week, and it's like, where where did Ross even go? You guys must have treated Declan really poorly because he texted me late last week and said, please tell me you're back for Before I Die on Monday. You know, we, we treated you probably poor. I apologize for the egregious comments that we possibly made. We're glad to see you did wear a shirt, though, to start today's episode of Before We Die. Well, we're not outside, and we're not on my couch, so tarps on. Tarps on. Good. Good. Yeah. <laughs> Rule tarps, of thumb, tarps on tarps on for the football season uh which is getting started you guys in 13 days preseason is finally over we get the meaningful meaningful football back how excited are we are our concern concerns still there still valid having watched uh preseason close out at us bank stadium saturday judd we'll start with you first of all i'm ecstatic that it's done because it, it's funny when training camp starts it, it's like Okay, at least football's back, right? So you're like, okay, it's football practice, but at least it's back. Then you get to the first preseason game, and you're like, oh, good, because I am so sick of football practice. I get to see a game. Then you get to, it used to be the fourth, now it's the third game, and, and you're like, I can't take this crap. So it is here in the nick of time. Um, my concerns, like I still have some concerns about the interior of the Vikings offensive line, but... I keep saying this. This is as curious as I've been in a long time. Like, there's so many interesting storylines and things we don't know and directions this team could go that I'm probably more optimistic about the excitement that's about to begin than I am, like, truly concerned. And plus, look, the American League Central in baseball is the worst di division I think I've seen in my lifetime in any sport. But the the... North Division in the National Football Conference might not exactly be a juggernaut itself. So I do have high hopes that, that although I don't think the Vikings win 13 games again, I do think that they can be very competitive for a division title. I think I'm most intrigued by what the division looks like, exactly what Judd said. Does anybody really know how good the Green Bay Packers will or won't be? It's probably all going to rest on Jordan Love's arm as to how many games they win. I think everybody expects the Bears to be improved, but how improved will they be? They made a lot of offseason additions, especially in free agency. People like their draft. We'll see there. All the offseason steam on the Lions perhaps being the best team in the division. I, I don't know. I need to see it when people are telling you you're good versus just coming out of nowhere the back half of the year when most of your games didn't mean anything until the final week or two of the season. So I'm with Judd. I'm just most excited to see how the NFC North plays out and what it looks like. And Judd and Jesse, Vegas almost always knows. Vegas believes the Vikings are an eight and a half win team. Roughly, depending on the book that you look at. Where will the Vikings come in on that? Well, I guess we'll start to know here in about, what, a week and a half, two weeks? Let's go. I can take that. I have questions kind of surrounding the running back situation. I know we saw Dalvin Cook obviously move on to greener pastures with he who we shall not name at quarterback uh, out in New York. But I'm curious. I mean, Ty Chandler obviously earned his spot as the running back, too. But there are questions as to how that game and that part of the offense is going to perform. I mean, Alexander Madison, we know what he can bring to the tab table. Uh, curious, Judd, what are your thoughts on the running back situation for your Minnesota Vikings having seen preseason? If I had to pick one word for it, I would call it fluid. I don't think they're done yet. I think that um, th the fact that they expected 
uh, Kane Wangwu to challenge Chandler, and he got hurt er early in camp, and he disappeared. I think, well, after the final cutdowns, I think we're going to see an addition of either a veteran or a more experienced back off of waivers to either be behind Chandler or be the two behind Madison, or they could, after week one, when contracts aren't guaranteed, they could actually sign a guy like Kareem Hunt, uh, mm -hmm. who I don't think that you would sign before the first game, because if you do, you're locked into his contract. If you don't and he fails, you basically can uh, cut ties without it being a huge financial penalty. So I agree with you, Jesse. I just think that they are in a situation where they're going to do something else. And I liken this a lot. In fact, I think these, these positions are very closely linked now in 2023. I liken this a lot to goaltenders in hockey. Because I'm not going to spend a ton. Like the Dalvin Cook move to me is a solid move. Because he cost too much and he wasn't going to take a big pay cut here. So when you decided to go by a committee, I have no problem with, with that. I think the Wong Wu thing has, has left them in a bit of a lurch, though, because mm -hmm. they have no idea now what to expect. So I think we're going to see a move made here fairly quickly to solidify that. But I still like their thought process, and I still like the potential of a, a, of a committee as opposed to a bell cow where it's, you know, Dalvin Cook is going to get the majority of the carries. I have a question on that, Jed. You wouldn't have gone if if the reports were true. It was maybe a million, two million. You wouldn't have made up that difference to keep Dalvin Cook another year here. Doogie uh, reported that he was not going to take it, take that pay cut here. Mm -hmm. So, like, he had his contract, and he basically said, "If you're keeping me, you're keeping me." Yeah. And I would not have paid what and and Cook's play. Like, I know that he had a handful of impressive runs, but if you look at his per carry average yards after contact, he is nearing that magical 30 years old where guys it, at that position just go off the table or the cliff eventually. So, no. Um, if he had said, hey, I still want a lot, I'd say no, dude. So, And I don't I don't think at the end of the day that Dalvin Cook here w is going – would have been a, a huge upgrade. I just think that they need more depth there, and that's one position at which I think the 53 that comes out at 3 o'clock on Tuesday will not be indicative of probably where they're going to go. Mm -hmm. I think the Kenny Wong Wu – Wong Wu, that's a tough one for me to say. Always has been. <laughs> Kene Wong Wu. Kene Wong Wu, yeah. I like it. Always been tough for me. Apologies State. on that. I was State. Oh, let's not get Jesse started let's on go. that. Let's go. There's so many cyclones roaming around the NFL this year. Yeah. So and, excited. And in these YouTube comments, on games. As, <laughs> as you'll see, I'm most worried about what him not being around does in the kick return game and the punt return game because that's been – a bit of an adventure in the preseason. So I'm worried there because Judd, Jesse, whether people want to admit it or not, they might not be on the field for an actual one third of the game, but special teams is a third of the game. It is critically important, vitally important to winning football games. It's this off season, or at least this preseason, excuse me, has renewed my appreciation for Marcus Sherrills, who almost always just caught the ball especially on punts. Wasn't the most flashy, did have a couple of nice punt returns for touchdowns, but just a guy who can stand back there, go like this, and catch the ball, it's important to have one of those guys, and I'm not sure that that player is on the Vikings roster at the moment. You don't have confidence in Jalen Rager? I, don't, I can see Judd <laughs> smirking, too. Brandon Powell, I think... Brandon Powell, um, who is a guy that KOC knows from their days together with the Rams, I think he's going to return punts. I think I could make a case now that the league hates kick returns to, to the point now where you can catch fair catch the ball at like the five and yeah. you get it at the 25. Yeah. So that's the thing with like Kane has a skill set that the league hates. They they don't want him to return kickoffs. They don't want returning kickoffs. And yes, if he does it, he's very good, but I don't know that it's going to be worth it. And on the punt return front, I think Rager is going to be replaced by Powell there. So I get your point, Roscoe. I am more concerned about coverage on, on special teams than the actual returns, though. Um, but, yeah, I just think the running back thing is going to be 
a work in progress. Madison's going to be the guy, but I fully don't expect that he's going to have the um, amount of carries that Cook got last season. What's the learning curve, Judd, should the Vikings bring in a running back after week one? Look at last year, the Vikings bring in TJ Hawkinson. It seemed like there was no learning curve, and he's essentially, he is a tight end, but he's essentially a wide receiver as well. What is the learning curve for any running back you would bring in, quote unquote, off the street? If the guy can block, it's simple. If if he can't block, he's probably screwed. But I, I think it's a position at which, like, of, of all of the, like, intricate football football, you know, starting with a QB who has to know everything, I think a running back, especially a veteran one, it's not hard. It's not hard. He Now, I want to see that guy be able to function in pass protection because that's incredibly huge. But if you can, you're fine. So I think from a learning curve standpoint, it's – I'm not saying that there's not one, but I don't think it's like, oh, my God, th- this guy's going to have to spend two weeks preparing to play. So I think he'd be what, fine. What's your percentage of confidence that that does, in fact, happen now that we're ending a preseason, we're getting ready for that big game up here in September? Are they going to make a move? They are going to pick somebody up in free agency, and how confident are you that it will be a back? Uh, I'm pretty confident that they'll add there. I'm pretty confident. Um Wang Wu is a question mark, period. Now, the problem was, because he he is, as Ross talked about, he's been a really good kick return man. But, like, this was going to be his training camp to prove himself at the running back spot. And in the uh, spring workouts, OTAs, mini camp, he looked good. To the point of where on the first, they call it unofficial depth chart, he was the second guy. But he didn't take part in training camp. So I think you're left with almost no option but to add a a guy. I guess my question is, is that a Kareem Hunt or is that a guy that, you know, is is a younger player? But I really do think that, you know, between Chandler and Madison, they'll probably be your top two. But I'm guessing that you will add a third. And for the record, I want to do a bit of housekeeping on my end. I know Wong Wu st- technically still a Minnesota Viking. I'm assuming within a matter of hours or days, he won't be. So, Oh, you, get, you think he's going to get cut? Okay. Rude. Cyclones need to stay. I, hey, we need more of them. I'm wrong. Experience. I'm wrong an awful lot. So we'll <laughs> see about that. Bring back Sage Rosenfeld. Bring him back in some capacity. I'm, I'm cool with that, too. That would work just for me. Uh, you guys, you know, in this business, there is no love lost, if you will, for players that go to different teams. Yes, we can joke. Uh, Cookies are united now with uh, Aaron Rodgers. We kind of hate that. But it is what it is. I got an email today in my inbox. I get a lot of these that are kind of funny little, hey, maybe here's a story for you to touch on. Well, this one came to sports and relationships, which everybody loves, right? Let's go into that. This is from the grueling truth. They said one in 10 sports fans would not date their partner if they were a fan of a rival team. How do you guys feel about this? Could you date or marry a pack? I mean, Packers, that's where we're going to go. We could maybe mix in the Bears there. Maybe even the Eagles, I think, is a pretty sol- solid little rivalry Cowboys? as of late. You want to go Cowboys too? Is that your biggest rivalry? Well, I- I think that the country, if, if you're not in Dallas, just hates them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like people literally, they, they, have team, not been to a, they have not been to a conference championship game since 1996, and people still just despise them. Mm-hmm. So I'll start and, and say, say this. In my job, one, I don't really care as much, but when I covered the Packers for the Star Tribune for two years, my wife Dawn became a Packer fan because she's from – she's from – Cedar Rapids, small town, you know, Green Bay, small town. And she would come to see me and she fell in love with, because it's like a college team. Like it's literally like a college team. So I am now through my own doing, my own fault. I am married to a Packer fan. Wow. So, but I feel like there are a, I, I feel like if you were to be a Vikings or Packer fan and say, I will not marry a fan of the opposing team. I feel like there would be a lot of people who who I've heard about who have gotten married through the years who wouldn't have. Because I feel (laughs) like I know I see a lot of Viking Packer fans who do tie the knot. So, but yeah, Don loves the Packers now. It's all my fault. And I have only myself to blame. The Packer fan part to me is very interesting from the standpoint of, follow me here, how ingrained in 
Packer fandom are they? Is this a Minnesota transplant who's from Wisconsin? Is this somebody who grew up in Minnesota and because of family reasons is a Packer fan? What does that look like? Me, I'll be honest, my current situation, I don't care what team she cheers for as long as she wants to date me. So you can be from Green Bay. <laughs> I'm just throwing that out there. At you this just point. want to get them through the uprights. Yeah, you don't yeah, care how exactly. It goes in We're there. just trying to put the ball through the uprights. We're oh. trying to get into the end zone. Use your own euphemism or play on words that you would like to. But for me, Judd, we've talked about this when you talk about the Wisconsin Badgers. I don't necessarily have a problem with the Packers or the Badgers. Oftentimes, it is the fans, and I, I assume they would say the same thing about us. Have you guys ever watched a Green Bay Packers game with a Packers fan? Yeah. I'll do I'll do my impression for you, okay? I'll give you the Brett Favre version, the Aaron Rodgers version. This is almost every Packers fan you watch a game with. Go, Brett! Go, Brett! Throw the ball, Brett! Oh, Brett! <laughs> go, Aaron! Go, Aaron! Aaron, get rid of it! Get rid of it! Throw it deep! Oh, Aaron, it's insufferable. It is. See, that's so, where I'm I'm at. Separate TVs. Separate TVs, yeah. separate rooms for watching the games. Like there is it just it depends on the fanatic in them. Because if it's gonna ruin your whole day, like I'm not all about that, no matter what, right? Like we're no. gonna move on. We're gonna move we are used to heartbreak here in Minnesota. So maybe that's just the jaded negativity within me. Uh, but in general, I'm like, all right, let's let's move on. However, I'm very competitive, boys. I love to win. I love to be right. I love to stir the pot. So part of it would be very, very entertaining to date your rival, right? Just because it's another little button you get to push, another little side bet you get to make. Maybe it's dishes. Maybe it's laundry, whatever. Maybe it's just good old-fashioned chirping fun. You know what I mean? Like, I enjoy it to an extent. Now, I have plenty of friends who are Green Bay Packer fans. I don't think they would have dated me haven't I, had I given them the opportunity, of course. Uh, but I think <laughs> because I can be a little relentless as well. Like, I love to just get in the mix with it. So, ultimately, yes, I would do it. But in general, I would need to, to be in good poking fun. It, it would take a little convincing, right? More than just, like, the first typical first date where you, you see everybody looks for flaws, right? Yeah. It would take more than like those first date flaws. You would almost need two or three to see, okay, I know the flaw for me. She's a Packers fan. What are other flaws that could potentially be deal breakers here? I think it would be the in-laws that would bug me the most. Great. Point. Like, because, you Great know, point. her her dad, you know, would be like, are you serious? Because, you know, he'd be really competitive. He's an and, owner. He owns, he's a part yeah, of the team. He's got so, that meaningless sure. piece of paper. <laughs> but, but here's my question. More importantly, and I don't think I've ever asked this of of a uh, marriage, for instance, of a Packer and Viking fan. How are the kids raised? That's see, that's like, the big question. I'd be curious to know that. Like, like that mm -hmm. would be my question. Like, do you, uh, like because you can't raise them? I wouldn't think is hey, you're a sort of Viking fan and Packer. I mean, that doesn't yeah. work. Mm -hmm. That's going to earn that poor child ridicule. So my real question is. How do people raise their kids if she's a Packer fan and he's a Viking fan? Is this Flip a coin. is this similar to when you're maybe growing up in a household where maybe mom is Catholic and dad is Jewish? You just kind of figure it out and make concessions. That's the only comparison. My I can mom make. was Catholic and my dad was Muslim, and she said, "If we have kids, or what when we have kids, they're being raised Catholic." Yeah. And like a good guy, he's like, I don't care, whatever, that's fine. The one who does okay. the work in the birthing room probably gets to have a little <laughs> yeah. bit more does say. She get the, but does she get the football say? Well, that depends. I mean, if she is a big football fan, then yeah, absolutely. Like if I, you know, I grew up as Vikings fan, these are memories, this is what we do. I mean, again, it sounds like there would have to be some sort of duel to assert it. There's I, there's always that championship trophy. In this case, I'm it's a with child's you, fan. I feel like giving birth should earn you some yeah. rights that men don't have. Oh, and, general and too bad. Nice. But, but the problem now is got is is like guys now who are probably in their I don't know twenties, thirties. You know they see themselves very much now as co-parents, right? They're in they're in the delivery room and they don't do the work. But I could see that because I was born in nineteen sixty nine. Okay, 
my old man was at home asleep. My mom had to call and say, it's a boy. So, you know, he forfeits all rights. Yeah. Now, I think it would be far more of a, oh, you know, honey, I think he should be a Viking fan. But no. 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 Whoever gets that, you know, actually, it depends on how many jerseys you get, too. I imagine that baby shower would be real fun. Like, I again, yes, like Good something boy. tells me the comments below are going to be as polarizing as they have ever been on this topic. So please Perfect. weigh in. Yes. Question for you guys. What is the so so like of all the sports for for you guys, what is the and teams? What would be the biggest deal breaker if your spouse like like hockey um college football you know like let's go through all of them what would be the one like i i could see uh back in the wcha hockey days i could see a north dakota fan yeah. and golfer fan yeah. non-starter nope not that's a non-starter that would have been a non-starter for me 100 percent. so you're out on that one out on that one i wouldn't have ever dared date a and football dakota. you don't care as much uh no if they went to iowa that's i'm a Pretty much done with that too. I also hate Iowa with a searing passion. So who hates Iowa? <laughs> who hates Iowa? We hate we Iowa. Hate we Iowa. hate Iowa. Uh Chicago Blackhawks might be somewhat, only because Blackhawks fans are incredibly, incredibly obnoxious. And for a very long time, I had a withstanding hatred for the White Sox as well. Um, so those teams yeah. back in back in the day, maybe a little bit, but yeah, now you mentioned it. That North Dakota Gopher. Oof. Yeah, big no North. North Dakota and Gophers, that's a great call. I've always been thoroughly annoyed by Cubs fans. Don't know why, just have yeah. been. Your your cute little park that nobody fits into that smells like <laughs> asbestos, great. Enjoy it. Have fun. I love Wrigley, so. And uh, I'm Cardinal sorry, Judd. We'll, Cardinals we'll... fans, very obnoxious too, by the way. And actually, it's funny. Oh, you're talking baseball Cardinals fans. Yeah. Arizona Cardinal <laughs> fans, however, mind you. It is the biggest deal breaker for them. 47 or no, 67% said they would not date somebody that didn't cheer for the Arizona Cardinals. Re what what yeah. the the do they have to pick? Yeah, what do they have no to pick? should be like Ross. No idea. Just looking for somebody. Vikings fans <laughs> were only like 10%. Packers fans also seemed very oddly low because I don't buy that for a minute. But. Does it surprise anybody that Minnesota was very low on that? You know, we're, <laughs> yeah. we're so passive aggressive for the most part, easygoing. Ah, whatever. Cheer for whoever you want to cheer mm -hmm. for. Well, and there are, in this state still, there are a ton of Packers fans. Oh, they're all over. Yep. There are a ton of them. So, I, again, I think if you're a Vikings fan and you draw that line, I think there would be I, – I think we'd have problems here. I mean, I think there's a lot of Packer Vikings households. I just want to know – what the call is on the kids. That would be my biggest thing. Like, how do you, because I could see that actually becoming far more a bone of contention than your spouse's like of, of the team. Imagine if, you know, you got three kids and those little brats come down in Packers jerseys and you got to tolerate <laughs> that. Cause you're, you're already you're ruining your husband. Sunday anyway, but exactly. they're just going to make it even worse. This is my I, biggest I guarantee you, Judd, there are many watching this right now that have that exact same scenario and they will weigh in. So I think we're going to get back to this more than likely next week for a few minutes. Love it. Love it. Speaking of comments from YouTube, Ross, let's cue her up, eh? Oh, you know, if Ross hadn't taken two weeks off, he would have been so much Declan more ready would have been for all this. over this. Yeah, Declan. Comments from YouTube. You like how I just cut you guys off when you start talking about Declan? Get out of here with that Declan stuff. Here we go. I got two for you. You ready? Let's go with the serious one first. This is from Buck Strickland 956. You guys can both weigh in here. Nick Mullins is the best backup quarterback the Vikes have had since Gus for Rock. These three don't know shit. I think that was some self-censoring on the YouTube comments. My question to you from Buck Strickland's comment, who is the best backup quarterback in Minnesota Vikings history? I mean, are we not putting any respect on Case Keenum and what he right, did in 2017? Right. Like, please. Like, that is an egregious comment. Rich Gannon? I'd even toss in Sean Salisbury. Like, they were all backups. They all did stuff. Like Randall Keenum. Cunningham started a season as a backup. See, but he's a starter. See, I would say Cunningham. I did think about him, but I see him as a starter. Like, you know, what I, like Case Keenum was never even named the starter, despite him coming in and what, like game two, game three. Like, never hated him. Yeah, just ridiculous. Like, yes, he's right. 
that's it. Uh, here's a quick one for you. So Judd said you were right, Jesse. So follow up for Judd. Judd, who's the worst one of all time? Is it Josh Freeman, Spurgeon Wynn? Who's the worst Vikings backup <laughs> of all time? Well, the problem there is sample size because it's so small. Like Josh Freeman had one horrendous game. The answer might be yes. Um, Spurgeon Wynn played in what, a couple of games? Yes. A um, yep. couple games yeah, late I mean, year, Danny lost his job. I I mean yes, there are a lot of uh, there are a lot of choices there, but uh, the Freeman game for a guy that played one game as a Viking, it is remarkable that almost everyone knows who he was here. <laughs> yeah, like if you say true. his name, there is a huge portion of of people who just groan, and they're exactly right. So I think Josh Freeman and the game in which he was. It looked like he was trying to throw footballs to the moon in New York or in New Jersey is probably a fair one. True story. <laughs> Somebody came up to me at the fair over this weekend and said, who was that Vikings quarterback who threw every pass like eight feet over all of his receivers' heads? <laughs> Josh Freeman, of course. You know, God bless him. Great guy. Brooks Bollinger was pretty bad. Oh. And Brooks Kelly, split time with Kelly Holcomb, Holcomb, Holcomb right? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Brad Childress brought in guys that were uh, as backups who were pretty, pretty not good at football. This next one's a little bit long, but we're gonna have some fun with this. And I still don't know where I'm going with this one. This is from Tay Tracks nine seven three seven. So Judd, when you said in the last podcast, because yes, I listen, even when I'm on assignment, you said you had a ferret in your backyard, which I knew right away when you said ferret. That was a weasel. So here we go. Judd, just a hot tip from my pest control professional. If you have a rodent of the weasel variety on your property and it isn't damaging anything, you don't want to get rid of that. They are predators of mice, ticks, and other small insects. I'd recommend letting the little guy do his thing unless you have a chicken coop and he's eating your eggs and chickens. So let's assume you're going to let the weasel do its thing. <laughs> Jesse, Judd, please don't take this out of context. Let's name Judd's weasel. <laughs> oh, good God. <laughs> Welcome to Before I Die, Judd. This is what we do well, here. Yeah, <laughs> please. How do you not take that out of context? <laughs> is my question. Oh, I'll be honest. That's why I made it the question. Uh, it's got to be Vikings themed. It's, it's before be I. It's, can we call it Shippy? We're trying to win a championship. Shippy. Well, wh what mm. could we name this thing? It's a weasel. I th I feel like it also could could be a candidate to be the name of either a sports writer or broadcaster. Sure. Because most people in our business, are in most people who are in pro sports, as Jesse can tell you, see us. As weasel, so I feel like he could get an honorary name. I mean, I want to, yeah, I want the fans to tell us their suggestions, oh, frankly, right? Because perfect. I, I got some ideas that are percolating a little bit. I still can't. I'm just hoping that Judd doesn't have a chicken coop in his backyard or anything like that. Oh, can you imagine me with yeah. a chicken coop? No, I can't. But <laughs> me I like to picture it as well because that would be kind of. I hysterical. also, this is what I love the most about you, Judd is that you assumed it was a ferret as if there's just feral ferrets or wild ferrets are there yeah are they they're just docile little pets aren't they oh are they i have no idea <laughs> i i know nothing about the ferret world it just looked it seemed like a ferret it seemed like that was a good name for it weasels are hideous looking creatures by the way mm -hmm. they are they are he's a little guy he's very very fast oh yeah for those and he's got a longer body i imagine like long and skinny elongated? He is skinny, but he's not that long. Like he's, he's not like what is not this? just this a sick a... cat. <laughs> no, it's not a sick cat. Well, hold on a second. It's not as big as a squirrel by any means. It's quicker than a squirrel. It's little. It's probably this big, but he's fast. Oh. I mean, he could steal. Is it a basically. chipmunk? Is it a gopher? A thirteen line brown squirrel? It could be a chipmunk. It could, be a, it could chipmunk. be a chipmunk, but it's always around. It's like a pet. It's always around. Chipmunk is uh it it could be, because it definitely doesn't look like it's still growing, and it's oh, not okay. big. And it's not and a little not, baby red squirrel. The and it doesn't seem tiny. not unless he's not going to grow at all. I mean, squirrels ordinarily grow fairly quickly. No, this but looks like the he red is. Red ones stay small. The, okay. 
I'll we ask have black him next ones time out here that are huge. He's very fast, though. Very, think, very fast. I think you need to snap a picture of what this thing I is agree. so we can get to the It moves too it. fast, dude. We want to get to know him better. What else do you have in front of you, Jesse? That's all <laughs> I had for comments. I'm done with the weasel talk. Hey, you know what? I have nothing else in front of you guys. are like, oh, by the grace of God, for those that like to count down 30 minutes and 10 seconds, you're welcome, you guys, <laughs> in this week's episode of Before I Die. As always, check out all of Purple Daily's content over on Score North. Constant football conversation. We ha- I'm, not, I'm not done, Ross. Don't okay. worry. Okay. <sighs> this is like my one shining moment I this, get. Yes. This... Just wait, we're getting there. We're getting there. And as we do each and every week before we end our episode, we have our cruise before I dies. Time now for the before I die crew to give us their <clears throat> before I dies. You might be going back on the pup list. I don't know. I haven't quite. Yeah, what's happening today? <laughs> I don't know I, why I doubted you, Jesse. I'm so sorry. I feel like like uh, like men are just a pain in J- Jesse's side because you know she's got the kids, she's got the husband. Now she's got you that she has to. Trying and to you know, typical you guy, you cut in and they're like, "Don't forget this," and she's like, "Yeah, I got it. I'm a professional." God damn it. We don't even call that mansplaining. That's just Ross splaining, and I do apologize. It wasn't mansplaining. No, you interrupted it like like you didn't try and tell her. You're like, don't forget this. And she's like, Yeah, I know. I'll just be docile and raise my hand over here politely. You do you yeah, right. You do yeah, you. right. Can't shut docile. me up like yeah. I wanted to. <laughs> docile ain't a word that goes with Jesse Pierce's name. <laughs> Who's kicking us off, Jesse? Judd, you start us off today. Okay, before I die, speaking of my yard. I've been talking about this for a long time, but I don't think I have brought it up on this show yet. So before I die, I want, with the approval of everyone in my family, to install some type of synthetic artificial turf in my back and front yard so I can be done with grass. But I got too much shade opportunity. in the backyard, too much shade. The grass doesn't grow, and then you get some weeds, and weeds... Uh, look, I... I don't want to deal with my yard. I want to have a couple of things. Turf in the front and backyard and some t- some type of contraption that is like a vacuum cleaner to pick up my leaves in the fall. I want to be done with grass. I've tried to suggest this before. Don has told me we're not going to do that. But I believe it would be in my best interest, especially as I age, to be done with grass completely and have turf Synthetic turf in my front and backyard before I die. My brother and sister, or excuse me, my sister and brother-in-law did this early on in the summer. Their backyard looks incredible. What? The oh, they put the future. Turf in? Yep, they put turf down. It's the you wave of the future. You know what, though? This originated in the Brady Bunch backyard. If yes. you guys ever watch the Brady Bunch, Throwing the that backyard, around. that backyard <laughs> is old school astroturf. That's what I want. No, no. I like cutting my grass too much. I just enjoy it. You don't wear shoes. You're going to cut your toe. Wearing shoes like now, right? It's like a Christmas story. You'll shoot your eye out. You're going <laughs> to cut your toe off. I'm trying yeah. to save you from yourself. I know. I just, there's something relaxing and soothing about getting that lawnmower going. The lines are so oh, You want to come to my house and mow? You're more than welcome. Bucks. Anytime. I'll do it for 20 bucks. That's not, actually, that's not a bad offer. It's a that's great tough. deal. You're welcome. 20 bucks cheap. Per, per front and back. So 20 oh, for the front, 20 40 for the back. Bucks. Cart, cart girl, too. So, like, you are. Cart, I, you're, wheeling you're and dealing. In. Yes, exactly. Roscoe, what you got? I'll keep this quick. Before I die during the Minnesota State Fair, we're going to have lanes, and we will assign people to lanes. You have a stroller. You're in the stroller lane. You're a slow walker. You're in the slow walker lane. You're in the walk 30 feet and stop for no reason to look every which direction. You're in that lane. You walk fast like Ross. You're in the fast walking lane. We would all enjoy the state fair so much more if we had semblance of traffic when we were walking up and down the roads. Can we figure out as well the corn roast situation for the lines oh, yeah. and the way that the gunks up that bottleneck. entire cur- Oh my gosh, it's a nightmare. It is an absolute light nightmare yeah. on like a Saturday evening with two children who don't want to listen quick, to you. Follow. Quick hot take. Now that they're setting records, literally almost every day breaks the record from the previous year. The State Fair needs to acquire more land. We're like sardines there every year. Get more land, make it bigger. 
That's, you know, that's fair. I'll wrap it up by saying, as I am getting ready to send my oldest to school for the first time, he enters kindergarten next week. Thank the Lord. I need to go back to the way that old school transactions, communications were done. I don't mind him bringing papers home because, you guys, I have four different apps to register him for different things. And it's all through these apps and none of them communicate with each other. There are all these different logins. It is an absolute nightmare. And the amount that we are responsible for as parents to get these little ones off to school, it just seems like a lot. God bless teachers. I love teachers more than anything. Yeah. They are underpaid and overworked. But there seems to be a lot that I have to do. Like, it's not just picking up a box Explain of brands. I, I don't apps. even get it. So there okay. are apps, right, that have, that's where his assignments will be. But there's another app that is for school lunches. There's another app that's for the community rec. And then yet, wait, there is yet a fourth app that has to deal with his own like student identity stuff or whatever. It's exhausting. And they don't tell you how to use any of it. Luckily, I'm pretty tech savvy, but it's, yeah, it's not not a fan. I can only imagine the amount of cursing that my mother would have done had she had to. Well, hold on a second. So he, so there's apps for like his, pro when I was in kindergarten, we went there, sat on a rug, the teacher read, I think it went from nine to noon we got a snack and then went home. Like, what the hell are they doing? Oh, now? they're full day. They are full day. They've got mathematics, language, music, science. My child, my child uh, can do most of these things, so he's going to be incredibly bored. But we're going to find out. So it's going to be fun. I'm more <laughs> all day kindergarten. What? Oh, yeah. Sign me up for that, though. 100%. Well, yeah, so, for you, for the kids. You know, most know. moms start crying when their kids leave for, I, you know, hey, my no. little boy's growing up. Jesse's like, Love can't hear him out. You know what you out. are? You've been jaded by hockey. You are the <laughs> Dean Everson of moms. That's what you are. Give me that little grinder. You Give me that, that grinder kid that get gets in there. in there, gets in the corners. He, yeah, it's just get in there. No, I love seeing it. He loves school right now, so I want to hold on to that as much as possible. So he's very, very excited. The other two, I don't have much hope for them. We'll see how those go. But uh, this one, he's going far. He's going to be my doctor, hopefully. Maybe. All day kindergarten? Like how long? Uh, it's a good question. I should probably know what time he starts school. It's going to be an app uh, for the time. Yeah, it's going to be an app you... for the time. 7.30 to I think like 2. Just check one of the seven apps and that'll tell you. This sounds like a huge missed opportunity by some tech company to go to the school district and say, hey, you don't need eight apps anymore. No, we can just, put it all on this dashboard. So confusing. And like, it just, luckily they have free lunches. So that eliminated one of the apps because there was one other app that I had to go load his lunch account when he was in pre-K. <sighs> so Quarantine. Hold on a second. So for assignments, does he bring them home or do you have to download them I from the app? I think it's both. I think I, I'm oh, not quite no, sure. No, this I doesn't know. work. I know. This doesn't work. What school? It, this is the White Bear Lake School District. district. He's, I'm going to sign him up for Matamida for next year. Give my so. number. Yeah. Give my number. I'll help him out. I'll, I'll let him talk to you. I do a lot of different things here to help. <laughs> I'll, I'll help them out. That, Ridiculous, Jesse. That's perfect. We're going to help our audience out by ending this week's episode <laughs> on that note. It is. I learned it's, something. Schools are screwed up. It's so much. I can't it, believe it. And again, I don't feel like there's good enough communication as to making sure you have all the correct things done because there's shocking. so many layers. I shocking. Am. Shocking. Jesse, if people thought today's episode was messed up and off the rails, good news. We'll have a Vikings regular season game to preview and discuss next week. Exactly. I think this stuff's intriguing sorry I, this is i didn't relationships know. and kids we minimum we we only talk hockey minimally so that should make some folks happy who i know don't care for the hockey talk also <laughs> i just had a thought cross through my brain judd zolgad the kindergarten teacher sign me up you're like schwarzenegger <laughs> yes, yes kindergarten, kindergarten cop, cop. <laughs> Beautiful. All right, you guys, again, thank you for tuning in. Don't forget to weigh in on some of our conversation, whether it's relationships, kid apps, weasel names, or maybe some Minnesota Vikings thoughts and thinkers. We will see you next Tuesday with the Labor Day weekend holiday, so be sure to check in Tuesday. Again, don't forget to check out all your Purple Daily Score North apps. Sign up, subscribe, rate, like, share. You're the best. Have a good day. Sure is great to be back in Hennepin County. Where's Declan? <laughs>